Good evening. Six people were rushed to hospital tonight after a boat exploded on the Mordialic Creek. The boat, the Azura, had just refuelled at the Motor Yacht Club on the creek and was heading out, it's believed, for Port Phillip Bay. Four males and two females were on board. A six-year-old boy is fighting for his life with 50% burns. A fleet of ambulances rushed the injured to the Alfred, Frankston and Royal Children's Hospitals. Eyewitnesses describe a scene of horror as paramedics worked on the victims. She was shaking like this and she had to have these ventilants, I mean this air thing and um, she just had burns really bad. CFA and boating experts are now trying to determine what caused the tragedy. It's believed the boat burst into flames on ignition. The state government's prisons policy is under attack from the opposition following the escape from Pentridge of a dangerous convict. Liberal leader Jeff Kennett has laid the blame at the feet of Attorney General Jim Kennan, the man who closed the prison's top security Jika Jika wing. Convicted armed robber Dennis Mark Quinn was one of those transferred from Jika Jika to B Division from where he went over the wall. During a check of B Division shortly after midnight, it was discovered Quinn had disappeared. Prison authorities haven't ruled out his still being on the inside somewhere, but major crime squad detectives have begun a large search of the metropolitan area with visits to Quinn's known contacts. After last month's fatal fire at Pentridge, the government closed down maximum security Jika Jika and Quinn was moved to B Division with lower security. At the time, the state opposition warned that closing the top security wing was putting the community at risk. Now, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the government have been warned. Mr Kennan must therefore accept personal responsibility. The 12 most dangerous prisoners of the 27 moved out of Jika Jika are in high security H division and the rest, because of space constraints, were placed in B division. Prison authorities today found two bars cut from Quinn's B division cell. It appears he overcame a razor wire fence and two walls with the help of grappling hooks to escape into the Coburg night. Night dog patrols introduced since the closure of Jika Jika failed to notice him. In the wake of the escape, police today had a warning for the community. At the Major Crime Squad, we're quite geared up now for uh, further escapes. Is that as a result of the closure of Jaka Not necessarily. Jaka? We just think that the system's overloaded to the degree that uh, more prisoners will be making their escape. Australia's most prominent sports fan, Prime Minister Bob Hawke, is leading the condemnation of Pat Cash for his decision to play in the South African Open. Anti-apartheid groups have also attacked Cash and unions have threatened to disrupt his appearances at next year's Australian Open. Cash arrived in Johannesburg last night, desperately chasing enough Grand Prix points to guarantee a place in the Masters tournament in New York next month. The Masters is open to the top eight ranked players in the world. Although Cash is presently ranked seventh, two Americans, Brad Gilbert and Tim Mayotte, could both knock him out of the final eight. After a disappointing performance in the London Indoor last week, Cash needs to win the South African Open to go through to the Masters. At the airport, he was not interested in talking politics. I'm a tennis player, OK? That's all I'm talking about, tennis. In Canberra, the Prime Minister said he could understand Cash's decision, but he was very disappointed. Uh, I would uh, compare it with the decision of Tom Carroll, our surf. You'll remember that uh, Tom uh, had the opportunity of winning the World Championship and that depended on him being prepared to go to South Africa and he said uh, that he couldn't bring himself to go there in a country where black people were prohibited from swimming on the same beach with white people. Now, he had lots of pressures upon him and the opportunity of the World Championship but he wasn't prepared to go and uh, I... Uh, you know, I admired and respected that, and I'm disappointed that Pat hasn't been able to make a similar decision. World Cup cricket star Simon O'Donnell is facing the biggest test of his life, but with the knowledge that his teammates and friends are right behind him. The 24-year-old has been told that lumps on his side are cancerous. Simon O'Donnell was told late last night by doctors that their worst fears were realised when lumps on his side were diagnosed as malignant. Only last week, the 24-year-old all-rounder was on top of the world, arriving home after playing a major role in Australia's historic World Cup cricket win in India. But on Friday, he was taken to hospital for a biopsy to discover the nature of the lumps that have caused him pain for two years. O'Donnell continued to let manager Jeff Joseph handle media inquiries, although O'Donnell has called a media conference on Thursday. Joseph said today the popular cricketer was glad to finally know the truth. Well, I guess, Eddie, if anything, there was an air of relief to find out something, to get some result. I should stress at this stage, though, that they are only preliminary tests on the biopsy. There is more examination to be done on that biopsy. 
and we'll know more after the next couple of days after he's had more extensive tests personally. In Brisbane, where O'Donnell's Victorian teammates were defeated by Queensland, players have been making continuous inquiries about their mate. Australian skipper Alan Border summed up the cricketing world's feelings when he said the news came as a terrible shock. I'm sure it's not as bad as what uh, the initial reports are suggesting it is, uh, or hopefully not anyway, and uh, you know all the boys are with him supporting him all the way. Still to come tonight, Jeff Kennett unveils a new lineup for his shadow ministry and in the Middle East young jockeys risk their lives in camel races for the pleasure of oil rich sheiks. Opposition leader Jeff Kennett has downgraded one of his rivals for leadership of the Liberal Party by stripping him of a portfolio. Mr Roger Pescott will no longer be the opposition spokesman on ethnic affairs, a responsibility which Mr Kennett has taken on himself. Jeff Kennett has chopped and changed seven of his 18-man team. None of his senior high flyers has been changed. They keep their old portfolios. But junior ministries have been reshuffled, mostly because of two retirements. In conservation, Jim Plowman has been moved on to water resources and property and services. The new conservation spokesman is newcomer Marie Tian, with only eight months parliamentary experience. Industry, technology and resources sees the slight demotion of Don Hayward, who goes to housing. And his old job taken over by Rob McClellan, who's made a career comeback. The senior role of police spokesman goes to former local government shadow Robin Cooper. And Roger Pescott, while keeping consumer affairs and tourism, has been stripped of ethnic affairs, which is assumed by Jeff Kennett in a bid to raise its profile and attract the migrant vote. This is the third reshuffle since the 85 election, and it may not be the last. With Premier John Kane preparing to make changes to his front bench, Jeff Kennett may be forced to look at his own shadow ministry once again. In the United States, it's been revealed that another jetliner refused to fly out of snowbound Denver Airport just before Continental Airlines Flight 1713 crashed on takeoff, killing 27 people. Investigators have been told a pilot for United Airlines thought the weather was too bad and cancelled his flight. Meanwhile, survivors have told how things started to go wrong as the Continental jet hurtled down the runway. There were like three separate explosions. And um, after the first explosion, there was a ball of fire shot up through the seats in front of me, engulfing four people in front of me. Then the plane pitched over on its side, and the nose dropped, and there were a couple more big explosions, and then we hit. I, I think the whole thing could have only taken five or six or seven seconds, I suppose. In those few seconds, the plane veered to the right. Its wingtip touched the ground. It veered to the left, hit the ground again, and flipped over on its back, and disintegrated. And in Wisconsin today, another passenger plane went down. Its wreckage was found scattered over fields and a wooded hillside. All that remains of a twin-engined aircraft on a business trip. Bodies of seven victims were recovered, but the flight plan shows there were eight on board. All were executives of a printing firm. In the United States, Ken Burslin for Eyewitness News. Oil-rich sheiks in the Middle East are risking the lives of boys as young as four in a revival of the sport of camel racing. The tiny jockeys are half starved to keep their weight down and then literally stuck to the saddle to ensure that they don't fall off and disqualify their mounts. Suddenly it's become big business for oil-rich sheiks while keeping alive ancient desert traditions. Beatings may seem cruel, but their trainers claim it's the only way to stop camels running in circles. They insist they are treated like royalty, eating off tablecloths on a lavish diet of honey, dates, milk and alfalfa grass. The boy jockeys complain they're far worse off. They come from Pakistan as young as four years old, and they're starved of food to keep down their weight so the camels run faster. It's a highly dangerous profession, and the young jockeys have to be stuck down on their saddles with special tape. When a camel falls, the jockey often can't undo himself in time and is crushed. For his family, there's just £12,000 compensation should he die. The Prime Minister met a troupe of Russian gymnasts in Canberra tonight. Mr and Mrs Hawke were attending the opening night of the Soviet Entertainment Spectacular at the Australian Institute of Sports Indoor Stadium. 
The group of 27 gymnasts is on a month-long tour of Australasia. They boast a high level of skills. More than half of the team are world champions in at least one technique. Now finally the weather and it should be mostly fine in Melbourne tomorrow, a sultry day with the chance of an afternoon shower. After a low overnight of 20 degrees, it should reach a top tomorrow of 30. And that's Eyewitness News for another day. Good night.